Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name's Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a garden tour for you. It's been, I think it's been like three weeks since I've shown you kind of like more in detail, kind of the progress of the garden out there. And I wanted to start inside because we have gotten started on our fall garden and planting and doing all the starts and things like that. So I wanted to kind of show you the progress that we have going on in here. We have four and a half flats. And there's a lot of melons, squashes, like some of the smaller squashes. I didn't want to risk trying to grow a larger size squash. There's smaller squashes. Uh, like there's a chrysanthemum melon, Arminian yard long, a bunch of cucumbers, basil, a bunch of kale, chard, collards, things like that. And then down here, uh, a lot more of the same. We have some acorns, some zucchinis, Kricknick squashes, some yellow squash, Kajari melon, um, just all different types. Some gherkins, be it alpha, all those sorts of things. And then a bunch of a bunch of squashes down here, some delicatas, some canary yellows, more chrysanthemums, some kaza melons. And so the next step is actually going to be planting all of like the the broccolis and the cabbages and cauliflowers and things like that. So that is next on my list. And in just a moment, I'll show you where we're going to put them. This is my deck. Pretty awesome deck, I would say. Okay, so I'm done with that part. So what we have over here is we planted these, I want to say last week. Yeah, I think it would, I think, I'm pretty sure it was last weekend. We planted these. And basically what I did was there's a row here of peas, a bunch of five, two in each one. They kind of split down the middle. This half is one kind, that half is one kind. And then the rest is some kind of a flower. And we did the same thing with all four of these. And it looks like this one had some growth overnight. All of these had nothing when I, when I was out here last night. So pretty good growth in one night. I just came out here and watered them pretty good. Here we go. These two are definitely blooming the best. And so we still have a few leftovers. We've got some fennel, uh, some what's that, chicory, chicoroy, and some flowers. A bunch of kale that I'm probably never going to plant, or uh, cabbages. I might try. It might be worth it, but they've been they those cabbages have been there for so long. I don't think they'll really do much of anything. And we have a couple of delicata squash that we need to plant, and some yellow crookneck. Ooh, I didn't see that. These are just some ones that never bloomed, and now they're starting to bloom. So, don't give up hope on your stuff. I'll show you this. I planted these at the same time that I planted the other ones that are down that we actually planted in the ground, and I'll show you those. On to the actual garden part. Okay. So, row number one. So we have a bunch of kohlrabi over here. There's a row of kohlrabi. There's some beets going on here. Some tomatoes that are interplanted with a few different flowers on it. And then just mostly just beets, because I planted this whole thing with a combination. It was like every other row was radishes, and those have pretty much all been harvested. And then in between those, it was either rutabagas, turnips, or beets. Mostly beets, because I love beets. But yeah, we still have some turnips left over. Not many, the turnips didn't do that well. The beets are obviously, I mean, you can see, I planted these. That was one of the first things I planted. So it's been, I think that was in April. So it's been a long time. It's middle of June, middle of July. And then we have Oh, we have a brain fart. Tamatillo. Yep, we have three tamatillos here. We originally just had this one here, and then this one, which is on the other side. And then we realized, we found out that, I think it was Jess at Roots and Refuge, who said that the, the tamatillos have to cross-pollinate in order to have, in order to bear fruit from their flowers, in order, otherwise they're sterile. So we went ahead and moved the one that we had like way over there to over here so that it could be closer for pollination. And then we obviously planted the onions. They're doing okay. They're starting to starting to really come alive here. And we just have a bunch, a bunch of tomatoes. So these two beds here, this one and that one there, 
are all planted with predominantly cherry tomatoes. I don't know if there's any that aren't, but there could be. And so these ones, we kind of just pruned the bottoms, right? It's pretty clear underneath. And then I let them grow with two main stems on the cherry tomatoes, just to make sure we get some harvest because they are determinate. And then yesterday I went through and planted, I don't know if you can tell, but like there's little divots in the wood chips here, planted beans, bush beans. And planted the ones that are like for canning and for fresh eating, I planted in the beds that are closer to the house. And then the ones that are meant to dry on the vine for, you know, for dried beans, those ones are a little further away from the house. You can see there's a little fruity here. Fruity. This one's set fruit. This is a Hartman's yellow gooseberry tomato. And, uh, you know, oh, this one has a, quite a few. Most of those ones pollinated. That's wonderful. I've been having a big issue trying to get these things to actually pollinate. I've had a lot of flowers that have dropped off. And so now, like almost, almost every single day, I just have been going through and kind of just tapping each of them, you know? just to kind of give them a little heads up because they're self-pollinating and so but if they don't get enough wind and I've also read recently that if they get over watered they won't self-pollinate so I think that was part of what I was doing these beds are if you have not seen the video I will go ahead and post it up here these beds are filled hugel culture style they have a ton of wood in the bottom and then they're filled with a bunch of a combination of like a three-way soil and compost mix 50 50 and then topped with wood chips so there's a lot of moisture retention in here and so i was watering them just assuming that i needed to water them and i don't think i did and i mean you can see i haven't watered these i've only watered these like twice i mean they have a little bit of like some like downward turned leaves but i don't think they need to be watered there some of them are curling i may end up watering in a day or two but i think right now they're fine and also if you don't know this is my first year with this garden I all of this nothing none of this existed in February March and we did all of this in one year and these are all pallet beds and then these are just kind of threw in there because I had the soil and the space and the trellising so we're just gonna go ahead and grow these beans up the trellis you know they're doing all right these ones I mean is me they're at least a foot taller than me i don't know if you can tell based on the angle but they're a foot taller than me and they're setting some pretty decent fruit these are all cherry tomatoes or setting some pretty decent flowers <laughs> not the fruits yet Let's see if we can find any more there's not a whole lot like i'm just really struggling getting these things to actually pollinate i don't know why if you guys have any ideas, feel free to shout them out down below. Oh yeah, this one, the gold nugget cherry tomato. This was our first one. This is the only one that pollinated with the original planting. And this thing is definitely setting a pretty good number of fruits, I would say. So yeah, I just come through, just kind of tap them, give them some vibrations, good vibrations, you know. Hartman's yellow gooseberry. No, that's this one. So same thing. You can see it a little better over here. The little holes. I did roughly about every, I don't know, four to five, six inches, something like that. I wasn't too picky. Each bed is 12 feet long and has roughly 20, 20 to 20. Ooh, there's a spider on my mic. Each bed has 20 to 25 beans planted in it. So it looks fairly similar, just much larger than my last video or my last tour, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of, you know, it's really taken off. It's really, it kind of exploded with growth. And especially the last week or so, because we had, we had a bunch of rain and not much sun. And now we have a bunch of sun and not much rain. I'm kind of glad it was in that order because the bed and all the wood inside the bed was able to, I think, absorb all of the, um, uh, not all, but uh, was able to absorb a lot of the rain, so it's been able to kind of carry it over into um, the time when it wasn't raining. So we just have a bunch of these. This bed here, whoa, you are way up in the sky there. These beds here are kind of sauce tomatoes, like Romas and Amish paste and things like that. Paste tomatoes, rather. 
and they're doing okay. I mean, they're nothing, nothing fantastic. These ones, oh, spider web. These ones definitely are the slowest growers. I mean, they're not, they're not blowing me away. They're not wonderful. These ones are doing pretty good. These are kind of the bigger tomatoes. Oh, this is how I ended up bracing my bed that was my trellis that was leaning a little far forward. I just put one into the actual ground and just roped it off and it's been working great since. No issues because with all of these pallet wood beds, uh, we sunk the posts in after we'd already filled it up. So it was really difficult to get any level of depth to them. And basically these posts here are six feet as opposed to the beds down there, they're eight feet posts. And they're basically the same height. Like, so they're sunk two feet less in the ground. And um, so the other ones, we, we just, we learned our lesson in post and uh, stuck them in before the bed was filled. And then we filled the bed around the post. So they're kind of, those ones down there are forever in there. These ones are just kind of like larger tomatoes, larger sized tomatoes from those part. There's sun globe. There's sun globe. <laughs> Top, triple crop. Uh, Tiffin Mennonite, some Wapsipicon, something, I don't know how to pronounce that. Another triple crop. Uh, you know, just some nice growing tomatoes. There's some beef steaks. I think this one's a beef steak. Yep, beef steak. So most of the ones in this bed I have also cleared pretty high. A lot of these branches are just so huge and they're growing down. I don't know. See, here's a good example. Like it literally just grows down. This one here. So I don't know if that's normal with tomatoes. I really don't know. If you know, let me know. Defi if it's a variety thing or if it's a deficiency thing, let me know down below if you know the answer to that because I don't. But anyways, most of these ones, if it's not a cherry, I've said I've trimmed it down to a single stem and for the most part with some made it through and like this one here like I, it got too big before I noticed so I just let it grow but this one I intentionally let grow because it's at the end and so I'm gonna go ahead and let it one grow up here one grow up here and so I had tied these all off almost all of them I tied them off and kind of looped them around until they could securely be weaved in and out of this trellis thing and then uh, but I went through and cut off most of the ones that didn't need it anymore. So that's why you still see a little bit of red strings here and there. Those ones still kind of need it. They're not high enough in the trellis for me to be comfortable to take it off, basically. So it's just the tomatoes and tomatoes and then some more tomatoes. And here's more. This bed, uh, this is probably the best flowering. Oh, Principe Borscht. This one has a few uh, fruits. Set. Oops, sorry. That's probably going to be really loud. This one, Principe Borst, has a lot of fruit set. But yeah, just come through like literally every day, sometimes morning and evening, because I really want tomatoes. I just come through, tap them, tap, tap, tap. <clears throat> sometimes I'll even take like two fruits and try and like pollinate each other. <laughs> I mean, I'm single handed, but you know, take two hands, kind of turn them towards each other, mush them together make the tomatoes kiss. Sometimes I do that, but usually I just shake them. Matt's wild cherry. So in this bed, well bed, in this pallet, we have just a bunch of tomato, bunch of peppers. And these ones in the, in the pallet are actually doing better than the ones that are in ground. I think maybe it was, they were planted like a week before, but I mean, that shouldn't have a whole lot. I mean, it's only a week, but yeah, the peppers are kind of my husband's. Thing. We both really enjoy the peppers, but he really enjoys gardening the peppers. So he just kind of does that and we both enjoy eating them. Same thing with the tomatoes. Like he probably enjoys the tomatoes more than I do, but I really enjoy gardening them. So, so far I've had a pretty good amount of luck being able to keep up with the gardening. It's probably because I have no life and I don't do anything apart from that and working. Like literally gardening and working, making videos <laughs> is about it. I kind of avoid the store like the plague because I don't like to wear a mask. I have asthma and it really messes with it, my asthma. So I just don't, uh, I go every once in a while, but only if I have to. <clears throat> so anyways, that's why there's not been a whole lot of videos out because I'm not going to the store and buying fresh vegetables, waiting for my garden to start producing. And then I'm gonna be putting up a lot of videos, but there are a few videos that are coming for sure. We just harvested our last batch of chickens 
last batch of meat birds and they're in the fridge cooling or in the ice bath cooling off and I need to clear room in the freezer so I'm going to be dehydrating a bunch of stuff so that those videos are definitely to come and so anyways over here we have a bunch of potatoes uh, my husband went through and planted them uh, he saw a video by Charles Dowding and where he just put cardboard down and dirt on top of it and planted and so that's what he did with the potatoes he checked them yesterday and they're doing really well he pulled up part of a plant and got a pretty good number of potatoes in there and then this one's a bit of a longer bed and they're just now kind of sort of starting to die back and after he looked at them yesterday he wanted to make sure to let them go just a little bit longer to make sure that he gets the biggest potatoes possible because who wouldn't want to do that more tomato tomato shaking and this one is the ukrainian purple tomato so I haven't mentioned in this particular video, but in case you haven't noticed by the endless rows of tomatoes, I have a lot of tomatoes. My husband counted and he told me that he thinks that we, or he, I think he probably actually counted, but I'm trying to remember the number and it was right around 180. So we have a lot of tomatoes and there's 67 different varieties. It's not all just one. I kind of went crazy in the Baker's Creek and MI Gardener catalogs and websites and ordered a lot and planted a lot i wasn't planning on planting so many but like i planted two in each of the pots and they all for the most part actually took and uh, germinated so i couldn't kill off the seedlings and i had to grow them all that's just life so i'm just finishing off the row here here we go this one is hillbilly and sweetie Brandywine yellow. The brandywines are not doing very well. This one is just not doing anything. I think it must have uh, some, because I mean, I don't see a top. And it's been like this since it's been planted for the most part. So I think it got topped and I'm probably just going to pull it. I don't know why I haven't pulled it so far. Brandywine black. The ones that are struggling the most are the brandywines. I should put it that way. A lot has changed in this bed. This is the 16 foot one that is the two by four with the metal planted predominantly with peppers but not all peppers. Uh, I'd say, let me see. I think these are like, well, there's three rows. I think, so I think they're planted about a foot apart and then maybe like a foot and a half in between each one. Uh, my husband planted all of these, they're all peppers. And they just are really struggling to grow. I went through last night and I, I fertilized everything except the potatoes with fish emulsion. And so hopefully that will help and it will uh, cause it to grow larger, bigger, greener, you know, all that. And so in between, I planted rows, like there, there's just, let me see if I can give you some perspective here. Like here is just a bunch of radishes all the way down. And then like in between, so, and then there's also this row here. And in between here, skipping obviously over the peppers are beets. And it's just the whole bed is planted the same way. And then here are some tomatoes that were planted much, much later, but they're actually doing really, really well. They're setting a bunch of fruit, or uh, uh, flowers, and they're setting some fruits. So these ones have been kind of just wild tomatoes. Oh, 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 there we go. We got a fruit on there. So over here, is our egg harvest for the day. <clears throat> well, at least for the morning. That was before I actually fed them and I left them out here. We have a, a red Russian kale, blue curled scotch kale, some um, rainbow, it says rainbow chard, but that looks like just regular char Swiss chard. And then some flowers over here, Golgardia, uh, straw flower, oops, straw flower, some more chard. That looks like rainbow chard. I must have accidentally mixed the tag up. It looks like a random tomato growing in the middle of nowhere. Some more kale and some more flowers. So, and then these ones, I'm really surprised actually sprouted because I planted, I planted one here, 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 and here of the four different types of summer squash that I have. I planted two just to make sure. And, but I came by like two nights later and it was just these like gutted on top of the soil all over so i assumed that like a mouse or something had come through and just eaten all my seeds and then they actually sprouted i was shocked i thought they're done for 
Similar principle here, but it's just all like radishes all the way down. I didn't plant anything in between the tomatoes here. It's just rows. There's four rows of radishes and they're all coming down here. So we got sparkler, purple plum, cherry bell red to me, uh, and a lady, lady slipper. And then here, okay, so try and give you some some better perception here. Um, all the way down here, beets on the edge. Uh, th this way is north, like that way. It's kind of off kilter. It's not exactly like north, south, east, west, but um, that way is roughly north. And so I planted the beets in the front because they just gonna need, the beets in the back end will grow much quicker and they will, the, not the beets, the radishes in between will just grow much quicker. So they'll go up and then they'll just be harvested. And then the beets are much, much slower growing. And so they need a lot more light. That's my thinking anyways. And so I put them in the front. This bed all the way down, same principle. I think that one there is the Zlata radish. I hate Zlata radish. The only reason I planted them is so that I can give them to my chickens. They are so bitter and so gross. Oh my gosh, they're this like, <clears throat> Um, So yeah, we have a bunch of tomatoes here and this one has not been mulched. I need, I still, we still need to mulch these and we're gonna be doing that at some point fairly soon. So here, I still need to come through. These ones were planted much later than the rest of the tomatoes. I think that's fairly obvious. Uh, they were left in the greenhouse for a really long time. And then once this bed was actually finished, my husband came through and just planted all of, all of the tomatoes that we had left. So my husband planted all of the tomatoes that we have, actually. It's the planting of the tomatoes is not necessarily something that I enjoy. And so I don't know if he enjoys it or if he just knows that I don't enjoy it. And so he decided to uh, plant those for me, but it was amazing and awesome. Thank you. Anyways, <clears throat> so here, same thing. Uh, these are early wonder beets, just planted all the way down. In the center of this section here, I planted greens. There's into, there's three different types of, of lettuce greens that are in there and then here is some white icicle. So I went, like I, you can kind of see the lines here, I went ahead and sprayed these also with the fish emulsion and I can see a huge difference even just during the day or from one day only. Like it's crazy how different it looks. So our main thing that we have around here are rabbits and I see lots of little rabbits. I see deer also but the deer since I put up the deer fencing they don't seem to be an issue. They're not traveling through my yard. I don't really see them pretty much anywhere. But these fences are not um, rabbit secure. <laughs> they might be deer secure-ish, but they're not rabbit secure in any way. And so they can get out and I think that they've been nibbling on some of my stuff. So I don't, anyways, that's why I put up the electric fence around the garden instead of the chickens. That's why. So here is just kind of, it's squash land. It is a mixture. It's a mixture of summer squash, winter squash, and melons all over the place. Like you can see here, Jake, there's some jumbo pink, pink banana. Here is, oh, another one. I accidentally planted them next to each other. I was trying to avoid doing that. Some Jardale pumpkins. Those are like the, the brown Cinderella type, or the gray Cinderella type. Orange butternut. Waltham butternut. Oh, I did it again, Waltham butternut. Let's go this one. Spaghetti squash. Oh, there's some spaghetti squash. I thought I forgot that. That makes me excited. And here's a uh, baby, Sugar baby watermelon. I did not properly prep this bed. <laughs> so there's gonna be lots of weeding to do in these tiny little holes. And not all of them are doing as well. They're definitely doing much better. I'm sure you may be able to tell, but they're much better up here at the top. And then this one's still pretty good as well. And then this one definitely starts to suffer, especially when you get to there. Um, you can kind of see the perspective here. 
But anyways, this one also, it's a canary yellow melon. The melons are really struggling. I think the melons that I planted, I don't know, maybe we just don't live in melon land. <laughs> like, and there, maybe there's just not enough sun, enough heat for the melons, because it's pretty universal across the board. Like, the melons are definitely riding the struggle bus big time in my garden. Uh, but hopefully, once we get this place kind of logged and get a bit more sun on the garden, then hopefully I will have more luck with the melons. And hopefully I'll have some luck this season. I don't know if I'm going to, but I'm going to try. I'm certainly, as you saw in the house, I have a bunch of melons ready to go. So I have definitely not given up on that. See here, Kajari melon. It just looks pitiful. But <laughs> be it alpha, like this thing is little and it is going to town. I think this is going to fall off. It probably wasn't. Mm. Yeah, there's no female, there's no male on here. But <laughs> look at this, look at how many there are. This is like a six inch vine. And there's like, gotta be at least 15 different different flowers forming on it. It's crazy. This, is a, this one is the Russian pickling cucumber. And this one, like it started to flower, but then like half of the vine right here died. I don't know what's going on with that. I haven't seen any bugs at all. So I don't know, I haven't seen any squash bugs or anything. I'm not saying they don't exist, but I haven't seen any. Kajari melon, be it alpha. This one got eaten, be it alpha. Lufa, Prescott Fon Blanc. Kajari melon. This one's doing pretty okay, at least by the standards of the melons, the rest of the melons. This one was the crazy one. Look, it's like just a giant, clump. Big clump of flowers. Yes, both male and female. So maybe, hopefully, Lord willing, we will get some cucumbers off of this. This is a Russian pickling cucumber. And look at this. <laughs> so the Armenian yard lawn got eaten. The loofah got eaten. Acorn squash is eaten. Market more cucumber. It was nibbled probably beyond recovery golden midget it might have a chance if I continue to weed it like I said I did not prep this bed properly the loofah is dead gone honey boat delicata my husband's gonna be excited about that one and then like the Dakota squash so just all sorts and kinds and types of various different types of just summer winter just a bunch of squashes. Okay, so one other thing that I forgot to show you was that I finished the cattle panel arches. You can see I did two in each, two in, in most of the rows, and then one in the end row because I just don't have a bed at the end of, uh, uh, there. But I'm super excited because all of these beans and, and uh, pickles, uh, cucumbers, all those sorts of things are going to be growing up the trellis and it's going to look super pretty. So I have a bunch of nice beans planted to go there. Uh, lots of like noodle beans and just colorful kind of beans uh, that are planted to, are planted and going to start growing up it. So I'm super stoked, excited to show you that when it actually fills out. I even have some melons planned planned to grow there. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this tour and seeing the progress of the garden. Uh, certainly how quickly a garden in its first year can actually grow. I hope you gain some inspiration and I hope that your garden is going as wonderfully as mine is going. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.